right, what's going on, everyone? Welcome into the first episode of the Behind the Mic podcast. I am Mike Cadlick, and I am humbled, honored, excited to be joined by none other than ESPN's Mike Reese, their Patriots beat reporter, uh, for episode one to kick this thing off. So uh, first and foremost, Mike, thank you so much for joining me, and uh, how are you doing today? Mike, thanks for asking me. I'm flattered that I'm the first person to do this and that you take an interest in you know, like a career path. So that's really cool. Yeah, no, it's awesome. And that's that's kind of how um, and why I wanted to kick this thing off, right? Instead of it being um, strictly sports-based, you know, kind of learn more about um, the paths people have taken in this industry, how you got here, what you like, what you don't like. Um, and so as much as I have this um, kind of set up and tallied as like an interview, I really want to make it into more of a conversation. Um, so before we get into, you know, the conversational piece, I want to start with Uh, We're going to do this. I'm trying to make some segments here. So we're going to start with resume time. We're going to call it resume time. And what it's going to be is basically right now, April 1st, you are ESPN's Patriots beat reporter. Um, But how did you get here? What did it take? Um, What has your journey looked like uh, really from start to uh, where you are now? So like think about it from a resume standpoint, Mike, Uh, I'll go bullet points because I remember my resume had the bullet points. So grew up in Framingham, Massachusetts. Okay. Went to UMass Amherst um, in the 90s, graduated 97 with a bachelor's degree in sport management. Unbelievable time out there. Um, We can talk about it. That's when John Calipari was head coach of the men's basketball team. Um, Just an unbelievable experience. Um, First full-time job out of school, Patriots Football Weekly and Patriots.com. Then to my hometown paper in Framingham, Metro West Daily News, a longtime People in the area might remember it as the Middlesex News, um, then to the Boston Globe, and then to ESPN. Been at ESPN since 2009. Awesome. Okay. And so um, you said Framingham to UMass. So when you were at UMass and uh, you said sports management, did you do like uh, like internships, you know, school papers, stuff like that? Like what was that? um, What was that like? And then how did you connect that to going right to Patriots.com or what was PFW at the time? Yeah. So, so I did everything, Mike. Like, so even before I went to UMass when I was a high school student, so I always actually wanted to be a professional athlete. And then what I realized is when you're like five foot four, like in 140 pounds, like you're probably not going to be a professional athlete. So my father, Roy Reese was a sportscaster in Boston in the seventies into the eighties. And he said, like, there's so many other things you can do around sports go to your local paper and, you know, you could write articles, you could, you know, do anything for them. So even before I had my license, he dropped me off at the local paper and I was working there on Friday nights, covering high school football, um, you know, Saturdays, putting out the Sunday paper. And, and that was awesome, Mike. So that was even before college. Mm -hmm. And then when I went to college, I, I worked at the daily collegian student newspaper, first beat water polo, (laughs) <laughs> like loved it. Like had no idea what it even was like, yeah. really. Um, student radio station, WMUA. I can tell you like right now, Mike, like we would be in there. Be like, give us a call. 413-545-FM91. Know the number right off the top 91 of my head. Right? Yeah, right. Um, so I did all that. I did work for media relations department at UMass. Okay. Um, I think we we covered women's basketball when we did the radio for them. So we would take trips with them. And I was like the scout team point guard uh, at practices because we were with them. Yeah, so right. those are like, those are unbelievable memories. And so you said your father was in the industry too. Where did he work? He was at Channel 7, was okay. his uh, last TV job. Um, and before that, like came up through the ranks, like local radio and like cool story, Mike. Like, I was at the gym the other day. And someone um, came up to me and goes, I used to love watching your dad. Tell him that back then he had the most highlights. So if you wanted highlights, yeah, you watch Channel 7 and Roy Reese. And I was like, oh, that's a cool story, you know? That um, is pretty cool. Yeah. So he did. It's cool that it's been in, it's been in your blood, too. So, like, you, you've always been, again, sports fan, wanted to play. But, um, again, to be able to, like, I'm sure you learned from your father, too. Like, he probably helped you along the way a ton and having, like, a resource and someone to give you advice that's like you know directly in your bloodline is pretty cool. Mike, he still he still does it today. 
he'll like critique the articles awesome. and like give suggestions. So like real example, he, he texted me or emailed me the other day. He's like, tell me more about this Alonzo Highsmith, <laughs> this senior personnel executive with the Patriots. What, what's, yeah. what's, his, what's his deal? I'm like, oh, you know what? If, if my dad is thinking like that might be something of interest, then maybe like others are. And yeah, it right. becomes like a note in a column. Well, that's something too that I was curious about is exactly that. And again, conversational jumping around, right? I have some other stuff lined up I want to ask you, but that Sunday column that you yeah. put out every Sunday, 6 a.m. on the dot, um, like literally appointment reading for, I mean, not only fans, but everybody else on the beat. Like, you know, we're all trying to find information. People are trying to put out information and tell stuff and whatever. But everybody, it seems, goes to that on Sunday morning. Like I, I literally roll out of bed on Sundays, and the first thing I do is look up Mike Grease and find out, you know, what's going on. So, like, how does that get put together? Um, if you could just sort of do a broad stroke of like how it gets put together, what you put into it, um, and also how it feels to kind of be that, you know, center of information on a, like on a weekly basis for everybody. Like that must be super cool and kind of um, I don't know. I'm, I'm curious about it. Yeah, Mike, it's really kind of you to say it. And and really, I would say that to me is being a product of growing up in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. where when I was six, seven, eight years old, I would run out to the end of the driveway and grab the Sunday Boston Globe mm -hmm. and read Peter Gammons on baseball, Fran Rosa, Kevin Paul DuPont on hockey, Bob Ryan, Jackie McMullen on basketball. Um, you know, Will McDonough, Ron Borges, Nick Cafardo, football, baseball, mm -hmm. like, and, and if you were from this region, even before my time, like the Sunday notes columns mm -hmm. were part of who we are in New England sports, you know, and, and so that to me is the roots of it. Um, and when I, so when I was we're at the globe, it was like, I felt like it was such an honor to even have that space. Yeah. to do that. And that was, you know, 2007, eight, nine. And then when I went to ESPN, I, I, I asked them, I said, this is sort of a little bit of a local thing, but mm -hmm. I'd really love to keep working on this Sunday notebook um, and try to keep the following of like, like what a Peter King did on Monday morning quarterback, Albert right. Breer, you know? Um, and so that's sort of the, the, that's, that's the, the, the guts of it, Mike. Does that make yeah, sense? Yeah, yeah. Oh, a hundred percent. And I think that's, again, it gives like, I mean, even with, um, you know, doing podcasts or writing things and again, starting this, I know this is episode one, but it kind of feels like it's, um, you need to keep sort of a regimented schedule so people know what's coming at the time. And then they just get into it like second half. Like, it's like, again, that's the first thing people do on Sundays is look to that. And then when it's, when it's not there, people don't know to look to it and then it kind of falls off. Right. And so to have, um, again, have that consistency, um, I feel like is something that keeps an audience too. So, um, it is, it, it really is like something that, you know, like I said, not only fans, but people, you know, colleagues like go to every single mm -hmm. Sunday. So, uh, it's, you know, it's an important piece and people write off and everything like that. So, um, that's, uh, it's interesting on how that's come together. And so, um, still speaking, um, or sort of connecting that to, your work at ESPN, something that I've noticed with you and every, I mean, everybody's noticed, but like, you're always first to the party, whether it's at a training camp practice, whether it's at the game, you know, the press box picture, whether it was last week at the owner's meetings, ha an hour and a half before Gerard Mayo's press conference, you have the first picture on social, like, here we go. Obviously that's intentional, but where did that come from? And it, it is that like, where does that stem from? Is that, um, is that a competitive thing or is that just a like, you know, I want to, I want to be here and I want to be first. Like what, what, where does that come from? Because I think it's fascinating. It's, it's what, um, you know, when I say like you are the, you know, really the gold standard on us for the beat and people like look up to it. Like those are the kind of things that people look for. So where did that come from? So, so thanks for noticing it, Mike. I, yeah. I mean, honestly, where it probably came from, from the Patriots is I didn't want to sit in traffic on route one <laughs> yeah. before a game. So I would grab the Sunday Globe like we were talking about and say, mm -hmm. I'd rather get there early and read the Globe, which I was going to do anyway while right. I'm at the stadium because traffic on Route 1, as any Patriots fan can attest to, yeah. is not the most fun thing to be sitting in. Um, so I think that that's part of it. 
Mm -hmm. I think the other part, and and this is like um, one of my my mentors who, you know, I really like in the heart is is uh, Lenny Megliola, okay. and he's a longtime columnist for the Middlesex News, Metro West Daily News. And if you grew up in Framingham, Natick, you know, surrounding areas, like you knew that if Lenny was at your game or at an event, like it was a big deal, and Lenny would when when i was working at middlesex news metro west daily news he would always get there early mm -hmm. he tells stories about getting to the guard like boston garden picture this mike like game celtics playing what would it be like seven o'clock seven thirty mm -hmm. whatever would be tip off and he would get there early and and i if i i might be making this up because the time has passed and sometimes stories roll into sure. like fantasy but but what i remember was him saying i got to the garden the lights were off and all I could hear was the sound of one person bouncing the basketball and then swish, mm -hmm. bouncing the basketball, swish, just keep taking shots. And he goes, I looked down, you know, to see who it was. And it was Larry Bird. Mm -hmm. And like, you think about a story like that, Mike, and it's like, that's a great story. That's mm -hmm. probably better than anything that's going to happen in the game that night. And he writes the column about it or he adds color to anything he's writing about Larry Bird. And it's, to me, it's like a great lesson that I yeah. learned from Lenny. That's pretty cool. And it, it makes a ton of sense. And again, what, when I say like competitive, it's not so much like, you know, beating out the others, but it's more like being, you know, on time and being on time as early and getting there and making sure that, you know, you're there. So I think that's, and that's, it's kind of cool how you built it off of, you know, what, what Lenny told you too. And so, yeah. um, I guess, still continuing on your work at ESPN. I mean, you do so much more than ESPN, right? You're on TV with, uh, with BZ, you know, after the games and stuff like that. What's, I guess, broadly, what is your favorite part of the work you do right now? Is it TV? Is it writing? Um, is it talking? I know you're on the sports hub every so often. Like what is, uh, I guess, what, what is your favorite part of what you do? Whew, Mike, I yeah. probably should have thought of the answer to that. I mean, I, okay. I love it. I love it. Pretty much love it all. Mm -hmm. Like, I, and I guess the answer is if I wasn't doing it for work, I would probably be following it as closely. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want to know what's going mm -hmm. on. So I think I love probably the, the thing that I love the most. I, and I've tried to like, I'm Mike, I look up now and I'm like, I'm the older person. <laughs> like it's, it's a little bit jarring to me. Yeah. So like quick story. I mean, we were at this Patriots season ticket holder event right. Saturday at the stadium. Mm -hmm. And and we were in the behind the scenes. We were in like the, the suite before we went out to the stage. Mm -hmm. And Evan Lazar at Patriots.com is there. Devin McCourty is there. Nicole Yang of the Boston Globe is there. Jonas Gray of the, you know, formerly of the Patriots is there. Mike Dusso of Patriots.com is the host. And, uh, and one of the, Abby, who was like running Abby who works for the Patriots, running us through the show, mm -hmm. says, Mike, you've been to, you know, so many of these, you're our veteran. And Evan Lazar goes, yeah, you're, you're like the old guy now. Like, <laughs> what? Mike, I'm the old guy. And then I get out there and I don't even realize it, but I'm talking about 1993 <laughs> and Drew Bledsoe, the number one yeah. pick being in the stands 1994 when Bledsoe throws 70 passes against the Vikings and being like, this is exciting as a yeah. kid, you know what I mean? Who grew up following the team. And then like free agent signings, like Mike Rabel, Bobby Hamilton, Anthony Pleasant in 2001. And I'm thinking to myself, Oh my God, the people next to me on the stage, they were like babies when this was happening. Um, so I guess to answer your question, what's my yeah. favorite part? It's like, it's like stringing together all these memories and experiences um, and being part of the conversation mm -hmm. in Boston. Like this is where we're both from. Right. Sports matter here. Like it's part oh, yeah. of who we are. It's the fabric it's the best. of, right? We it's like, it's, and one, one of the things I want to get to in, in our closing segment is, um, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to spoil it, but it's like, I, I wanted to ask like growing up as a sports fan or what else do you, but like, being from around here, like, especially, I don't know. I feel like sometimes it's all it is. Like that's the news cycle. That's what's going on. Like, I don't think 
I don't think it's like that everywhere else. Like it's, you know, there are like New York and Chicago, like it gets, you know, sports get into the news cycle and, you know, the, you got the bears and the black Hawks and obviously the New York teams, but like, at least from my perspective, being, you know, being 26 years old and growing up in the greatest, you know, watching the greatest dynasty in sports history, like it is the fabric of what we do. It is why people, you know, you it's like, I, I always think of, like playoff runs and being in school and being in high school, like whether it's um, spring, fall or winter, like you wake up in you before you go to school, it's like, Oh, nice. We have the Celtics tonight or nice. We have the Bruins in the, in game four tonight. And it's like, you know, and it's like, it's just, I don't know. I feel like it just, it turns into the sports calendar and it's not like that everywhere else. So I just, it's fun. And it's being on this side of it now. That's kind of why I wanted to start this whole thing because it's super, it's cool. It's fun. It's interesting to be on like the, I guess the storytelling side of the aisle. Definitely. And, and like, I think as I think about the answer to the question, like, how would I answer that? What's my favorite yeah. part? I think what I love to try to do is like, everyone sees what happens. Mm -hmm. Like I like to try to, to maybe enhance that sure. with a why, like why it happens. So like my, one of my favorite stories of covering the Patriots was their last Super Bowl win. And so for a lot of people, not the greatest game. Right. Like, you know, and so I'm like, yeah, there wasn't a guess. touchdown until the fourth quarter. Like it was exactly. just, yeah. You know, so, so, and, and I, actually let's go to like, literally that's what I'm about to like, let's okay. bring that back to life. So I'm up in the press box and I start one year. I just started charting like personnel, like who was on the field, you know, mm -hmm. like, three receivers, one tight end, one running back. And I would write their numbers on a piece of paper. And it would just help me understand the way the Patriots were trying to attack the defense. Oh, they're right. playing more three receivers today. Oh, it's more of a two tight end game. You know, I mean, this right up your alley as a former sure. player, right? Yeah. So, so they're struggling to, um, you know, score points, move the ball. And we're in the fourth quarter and Mike, for the first time, I'm writing down, it might have been the 54th play or whatever. One wide receiver, two tight ends, one fullback, one running back. It was the first time they used yep. that personnel grouping in the Super Bowl. And they go, if I recall, empty with it. Mm -hmm. It's not a, I mean, not a grouping you go empty with. That's a right. power grouping, right? They had, uh, they, and I know you're going to get to it, but like James Devlin was the outside receiver at one point in this person. Yeah, yeah, Mike, you're exactly. on it. It oh, gets yeah. me fired up talking about it. And that was the play that they hit, that Brady hit Gronk down the mm -hmm. left seam to set up the only touchdown. And, and that moment for me lit me up, Mike, because I'm like, okay, everyone saw the play. But does everyone know that was the first time they went yeah. with that personnel grouping? And and why did they do it? And yeah. so I go down on the field after, after that game and I find Josh McDaniels and he's like celebrating with his family, with players, all this stuff. And 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 then try I have to raise my voice because it's loud. Right. What made you go to that personnel grouping? And he grabs my shoulders and he goes. <laughs> You're crazy. You're the only person that would ask me that. <laughs> yep. We couldn't we couldn't get them into their base defense. They were playing nickel and we couldn't move the ball. We had to try something. That's and, awesome. And I, and I'm like, that's just like so I guess to answer your question, it's a yeah. long answer to the question. No, it's great it's, though. When you uncover like a nugget mm -hmm. that adds in real time. Like, and because honestly, and two, I'm watching the game at that point as a fan, I was in college, I was hanging out with my buddies watching the game. And so you see them put it together all of a sudden, but in the moment, we don't know why we're just, you know, hanging out, shooting the shit, like hanging out, watching football, like, oh, the Patriots just won another freaking Super Bowl. And so eventually you come to find out and I see three, four five days later, or even that night, maybe people talking about this is how it happened. This is why because they switched to this and they got their defense screwed up and because Rex Burkhead is running and whatever it was. Right. And that's the whole yeah. thing Yeah. for you to unhatch that oh, as it's going yeah. on, like to hear it again, gives me chills. Like it's like, Holy, it like, fires me up. Yeah. You see, so those again, are, you, right. Yeah. Those are, those see, are, that's what I love. Like, so that's the grit to me, like, and, and really, but it's in the spirit of you, one, you love the game, you love the competition, you love the strategy, 
but you really want to, like, you know, you have this awesome fan base, Mike, that's in it, that wants to know more. Like, explain it to me. Tell me why, what's really going on. You know, like, that's really hard to do. Right. But it's like fun when you, when you get something like that, it can be. Yeah. And you can, and you can hear, you can hear them talk about it a month or three months down the line in whatever three games to glory DVD they put out. But for you to have it that day and to be like, oh, I hatched this and I found it out. And again, to hear Josh grabbing you on the shoulders, like you, I can't believe you figured it out. Like that's, that's, that's a cool story. So, um, all right. As fun as that one was, let's try and see if you can give me your least favorite part of working yeah. in the industry. And again, that's, it's kind of silly to ask and it's silly to say, but work is work. Jobs are jobs. Yeah. Like what is one thing that's kind of a pain that, you know, people might not understand something that it's kind of, kind of hard to do. So, I mean, it's, it's a, to this actually easy answer, Mike, probably easier okay. than the, the other question about your favorite part. You yeah. Know? So, so um, been married since 2006, mm-hmm. like greatest thing, have the greatest wife and so appreciative of it. Two kids, 15, going to be 12 on the youngest. And the hardest part is when you're trying to balance that, sure. like family and a job that really like things can happen at any time. So, so on an animal safari at Walt Disney World, like thankful to be there, right? Like mm-hmm. it's just to be there and breaking news happens. And it's like, like, I don't even know, like, I'm in the middle of this animal safari, like your phone's like going nuts. Mike. Yeah. Like, you know, like you're on vacation, but you're kind of not like you got to always and, be on short. Sure. And I will say like ESPN is great. Like they're like, you need to take your vacation, but you know, like there's certain times when like something happens that just elevates to a level sure. that is that much greater, you know, or you're loading up the minivan to go to the water park and Aaron Hernandez gets, you know, arrested mm. just for an example. And it's sure. like, you got to turn to your wife and kids and say, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I, I I need to go handle this. That, that doesn't feel great. You know yeah, what I mean? Mike? And so thankfully they're incredibly understanding. And, mm-hmm. but those are the times that leave you sometimes with a pit in your stomach. Sure. Um, what was the breaking news on the safari? Ah. Uh, Good. Uh, that was the one when Robert Kraft got in trouble down in. Florida. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Okay. So that's that's that that's a uh, that's definitely a pause the uh, pause the safari uh, breaking news. So, um, well, I, curious about breaking news. I have one more question before we get into our final segment. But curious yeah. about like breaking news and how you handle that because there's in this newer social media climate there is such a rush to find the breaking news and sourcing and finding out correct information and being first to the punch versus being having it all right like there's the discrepancy right now in you know when agents give the contract number like all this money's guaranteed but it's really not and so how do you handle that because like i mean you'll break stories you'll you'll have um you'll have things obviously but um I don't want to say it's not a lot, but I feel like you, you always seem to wait and have it, have it correct, I guess. And so Mm. how do you handle that? Like, what's, I guess, what's your, um, what's your strategy behind, you know, your, your type of news breaking? Cause you'll even, and sorry to cut you off, but you'll even like, I don't want to say sneak something into a Sunday news column, but you'll put something in there instead of just publishing it as per sources, breaking news. Like, like yesterday it was just, Hey, this is what's going to happen with the Tom Brady thing, and that yeah. was news. But um, so I'm just curious on you know the yeah. way you tackle that. So that's a really interesting, Mike. You know, like it's an interesting topic because there's probably no right or wrong answer. I think sure. the I, I actually probably the one right or wrong thing is just make sure your information is accurate. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Because like, mm-hmm. and that's my biggest fear as a reporter is the trust that you hopefully um develop with people reading or following your work is mm-hmm. sacred sure and if you get one thing wrong mike the the worst thing that can happen and this is like a, a fear and you and me are, we're recording this i don't know when you're gonna post it but on april fool's day this is actually a perfect day yeah. to do it it's like i was thinking about this like someone that makes a joke about a report mm-hmm. like you're really cutting at 
the heart of, to me, the, the, the most important thing. So, yeah, for sure. So, so anything on news, like, like it, it has to be a hundred percent Mike. And so I'd rather, I would rather wait mm -hmm. and make sure than be wrong just because I feel like that could be irreparable. Mm -hmm. That's probably the, 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 the short the crux of it, yeah. answer of, of a longer discussion. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like philosophically, like things have changed with social media. So like use, use a signing for an example. I'll use, mm -hmm. um, use Kirk Cousins as an example, practical sure. example. Like I think anyone would have wanted to break that story. If yep. you recall his agent, Mike McCartney tweeted it out himself. Yeah. So, so Mike, when you think about it, like what, like if you broke that story, like, I, I don't, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I guess yeah, it yeah, yeah. chops, but like, so I think there's a lot going on there. That's interesting to me as our time is about. So I'm going to pull this out because I want to make sure this was, this was the computer <laughs> mic. Uh huh. That, do, have you ever seen one of these? Uh, no, I mean, maybe like in my high school as like a, like a, a relic, like a museum. Yeah. Right. Exactly. This is what old people use when they, when That's they so write. Funny. So this was literally the first computer that I wrote on when I started, when we talked at the start of this, at okay. the Middlesex News, we would go to events. This was before like awesome. the web. Uh -huh. It was before like cell phones that, you know. And now you have it right at your desk too. That's so funny. <laughs> oh, well, Mike, I knew we were talking. I don't care. Yeah, that's fair. But, yeah, so, okay. So, but, but, and we used to hook in a, like a, a, a cord and you'd dial a number mm -hmm. and it would um, fax beep okay. and you'd hit some, you know, and you'd hope that it would upload into the system. The reason I pull it out is like, the difference is like the agent, Mike McCartney, back in 1991, when I was using this, might have said, hey, like, Kirk's going to the Falcons. Mm -hmm. And you would bang it out into this, and it would be in the paper the next day, or on EEI, right, you know, with Eddie Andelman on the big, mm -hmm. you know, on the big show, or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's crazy. So it's so it's a different like that's such a long line of communication where now it's just tweet, send, bang. That's right. That's yeah. right. And, and so it's a sort of, it's the, the breaking news thing has changed is what I'm trying to, it's evolved mm -hmm. from the time of that computer to now when even the people who are supplying you the breaking news, a lot of them have their own vehicle right. to send that news out. Yep. Yeah. Does that That's make sense? Yeah, it does. It's, and it's, it is interesting, obviously how it evolves. Like it's, Wait, it completely, go ahead. No, no, no. It, and which gets back to um, my thing is like, I love to break news. I think it's critical, mm -hmm. but as much as that, I like to try to give the why to it. Right. Why did 100%. they do it or what happened? You know, because I yep. feel like that's, that's where we've evolved to uh, in a way. Yeah. And sometimes, like you said, that's more important, like the why and having it be a hundred percent correct and having the contract details instead of just having the, you know, the big picture number just to be first, because not that anybody can be first, because it's obviously you're, you're in the know and it's, it's, uh, I guess you're connected to it, but uh, it's it's a race to kind of seems like a race to nothing because again, you said the agent could have tweeted it out just as well as any reporter. So um, and, that's and at the same time, at the same time, Mike, like not to sit here in judgment of anyone because sure. if if you get the, those initial contract details and you can be the one reporting it, of course you're going to report it. Do exactly. you know what I mean? So it's Definitely. it's it's all fair. It's all fair. Yeah. As, oh yeah, I it's think, all fair. It's interesting. Yeah, yeah. and I think what. Uh, what, what interests me is I, I do think the consumers that are getting the information are much more educated and aware of this discussion. And what, you know what I mean? Oh, let's wait till the contract details come out. Bingo. Because, because they are following multiple people and perspectives that enlighten them on, on how the sort of, what would you say, how the sausage is made, if you will? Yes. Like, yeah, for you know? sure. Yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, all right, so we talked about you being at ESPN and in this um, Boston sports and really Patriots-centric climate for your entire career. Um, final question before our final segment is, yes. is there anything that you haven't accomplished that you would like to at some point? And, you know, you've been here the whole time. Um, was there ever any thoughts about maybe going to a national stage? Is there, like... Um, you know, because you're, you're really at the, not the 
peak, but you know, you're right now you're at the peak of our, you know, Patriots beat. And so um, is this the end game? Is there anything else that you'd, you'd ever like to accomplish at some point down the line in your career? Great. I love the question, Mike. Um, so I would say on the national, like, so in our business, there's like beat reporters, mm -hmm. as, as you know, I mean, just explaining it. And then you could yeah. elevate up to a national reporter, mm -hmm. right? Like, and cover the league. My view was I was national because of what Bill Belichick, Tom Brady, and the Patriots did for the better part of 20 sure. years. Like, what could be more national than that? Mm -hmm. Right. Like, and so sure. I love it. I wouldn't like, I never really had major itch to do it. Like, mm -hmm. why would you leave something like that was my yeah. perspective. And I have to say, I do like, um, one team. Like yeah. I love just getting to know everything. Yeah. About when you have to cover everything, there's so it's like, you can't get into the nitty gritty. It's kind of just 300 or 3000, 30,000 foot, whatever view of something. So yeah, that's, a that's good point. right. So like, to that point, Mike, like one of my, I love this story. 2014, this undrafted free agent comes in, Malcolm Butler. <laughs> like, like, what's he going to do for the team? He's the 90th right. player on the roster, right? But you're a beat reporter, so every player matters from the roster yep. to the practice squad. So you get on it early and you see him in like week 11 or 12 when he's a healthy scratch for a game against Green Bay. Mm -hmm. And you see him really down at his locker, like, oh, man, I'm no good. You know, team's losing confidence in me. Yeah. And you sort of say, like, Malcolm, what are you talking about? Like, you're on the team. Like, your right. number might get called at some time. Like, like get over. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah, like, what up. are you so down about? You're still one of 53 right now. Like, exactly. Mm -hmm. But he really hard on himself. Sure. Then you get to the Super Bowl a couple years, you know, a couple – like months later, right? And he saves the Super Bowl, and most of the country is like, "Who is that?" But Mike, you were there because you're a beat reporter. You know, if you were doing it at that time, you yeah. were there from day one, and like, I like that. You, you know, know who you this mean? guy is. Like, you've been around this guy in the locker room every day. You may know him on a first name basis. Where on a national level, it's just who the F, who the hell was Malcolm Butler at this point? Like exactly. nobody knew who he was. And again, at that time I was still a fan and not in it. So like, again, being a fan, I knew who he was, but you know, you don't think that he's going to be in that situation at that time. So that's, that's a good point. That's interesting. So, so along those lines, I, I don't know why my answers get so long. I get so excited it's to great. just talk about this stuff. That's why we're here. That's why I, I, I set a time limit that this, that's what this podcast is. And this is why so, this is perfect to be our first um, guest. So I, I like, I, I love my wife and kids and being like present and a dad and a husband is like super important to me, Mike. So between that and the job, like I love the setup. I think what I look for like is like to just keep challenging myself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I want to feel like there's things within the structure that help that I want to keep growing. And that's sure. the stuff, like when you, I think you ask, like, what do you still want to accomplish? Like what I want to, I want to keep like growing. Yeah. Like I don't want to like get to the don't point where I'm like, right. exactly, exactly. It's a, that's a good answer. It's fascinating. Um, this has been awesome. So I appreciate you being here um, and doing this because again, like you said, like getting caught up in the weeds of the conversations and continuing to dig, like that's why I wanted to start this. That's the reason that, again, behind the mic, find out who's behind the mic. It, it's convenient that my name's Mike and your name's Mike, and it works yes. out for, you know, for marketing purposes. But again, that's the that's why we're here. So I appreciate uh, you peeling back the curtain. Before I get you out of here, trying to make it podcasty and do it segmented. So yes. we're going to do fast five to finish. And what that is, is five rapid fire questions. Some have to do with sports, some kind of don't. But um, let's go. Rapid fire, fast fire. Okay. So number one, what is your favorite thing to do outside of sports? Go to live concerts and sit really close. So I'm like close to the front row, Mike. That is, uh, if <laughs> and this is supposed to be rapid fire, but famously you and Rich Shirt and Lieb a couple months ago, whenever <laughs> it was at that con at that concert, that was uh, that was some yeah. of the best viral uh, local <laughs> boss and viral stuff ever. That was that was amazing. So. Yes. Picture you with your your head and your mouth open. That was great. So, Mike, all right, number Mike, two. Go ahead. Wait, before you go, number uh, just what I love about it is the energy, the life, and everyone there is like 
together. It's one of the mm-hmm. only places I feel like everyone just leaves everything behind. Yeah. And it's just in, in pure enjoyment. Yep. All right. Number two, most memorable moment of your uh, sports media career so far? Uh, I would say covering Super Bowls. Okay. Like that's the Anyone pinnacle. specific? Is there one at the uh, top? Um, whew, no, I mean, they're, okay. I mean, they're all, they're all great. Sure. Um, best advice you've received being in this industry? Best advice. Um, first thing that came to my mind, and there's a lot of advice, but mm-hmm. what you think things are today, don't get used to it. Cause it's going to change. And that goes okay. back to the computer I showed you, Mike, like, like things evolve, you know, blogging started in the early two thousands. That's sort of went the way of social media there's going to be another change going forward just be uh fluid and adaptable to change and number four what would you be doing if you weren't in sports media Ooh, teaching like i almost got out mike in 2003 2004 i was feeling sorry for myself i was working all these friday nights covering high school football saturdays sort of lonely Yep. And I almost I took the teacher's test in Massachusetts. Wow. And and if I passed, I didn't pass the teacher's test. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Uh, Thank God he failed. <laughs> yes. Uh that's that's cool. That's that's a good story. That's a good nugget. Um, all right, number five before we get you out of here. What's your favorite pizza topping? My fa- my favorite pizza topping. Oh, good one. Uh so anyone that's been to UMass knows they have Antonio's. Um yep. so I'm like, I would say fresh mozzarella. So that's the tomato basil a little olive oil on it got to keep it light mike you know like that's why i know that's probably a boring answer but nice light what is your favorite pizza topping or do you not want to give it up because that's going to be coming down no i don't i'll I'll give it up it's so i like a classic pepperoni pizza like that is my that'll be my go-to but the reason i ask is because um town spa in stoughton has the the pickle pizza that I tweet it out all the time and yes. people get pissed because they think it's disgusting. And so I'll always tweet the picture of the pickle pizza, get some easy social media engagements, what have you. Um, so it's pizza Fridays. I love uh, pizza on Fridays. And so that's the reason I wanted to tie this one in there, but uh, that's a good answer too, because they obviously light fresh mozzarella pizza. Uh, that's it. Sounds outstanding. So, yes. all right, that is it. Episode one. Mike Reese, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I really do appreciate it. This was a fascinating conversation. Um, you are, like I said, truly the you know the standard, especially for Patriots beat reporters. So uh, thank you so much for joining me and uh, coming on today. Mike, super flattered that you asked me. Thank, I really yeah. enjoyed the conversation. Yeah, of course. So uh, that's it for episode one, everyone. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back next week trying to do this thing on a weekly basis. So uh, make sure to follow along on social at Behind Mike Pod. Um, on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and uh, subscribe wherever you got your podcast to the Behind the Mic podcast. And uh, again, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.